So what happens when we buy a call option? So let's take a look at through an example. So the current price of Apple is 198.78. Today's Sunday, and this was the price on um, previous Friday's closing. So let's open up a spreadsheet. Uh, this is Apple. Um, sport price is 198.78, and we are going to buy a call at a strike price of say $200. So what happens? So let's do a simulation. Let's put our $200 right here. Um, actually, 198.78 right here. And um, and I'm gonna put option value right here. Now, we will talk about this option value in a, in a minute, um, but bear with me for a minute. So, okay. Currently, the $200 option is, or as of the closing of last Friday, the price was, and this is for a maturity of uh, one week. So this was 205, right? So since we cannot predict the premium, what I will do is I will talk about how the intrinsic value changes with respect to how the spot price changes. Now, keep in mind that intrinsic value is simply an, an exercise value. So if I were to have a call option at the strike price of 200, I wouldn't be exercising this option simply because I can buy from the market at 198.78. Why would I actually exercise the call option and purchase the underlying Apple asset, Apple securities at $200? So instead of saying option value, and again, I wanna emphasize that the option price or the value has two components. Uh, one part is the intrinsic value or the exercise value, and the other part is the premium. And we have no way of predicting what the premium value will be simply because we don't know how the implied volatility will change uh, and, and we have limited data with respect to uh, what's gonna happen. So we can only have expectations and I don't wanna get into that. This is a, uh, a, a video or a lecture that simply explains um, what happens when you buy a call option. So let's look at an intrinsic um, exercise value. So in this case, the exercise value, because this is a $200 strike at a 198.78 exercise value is zero because we wouldn't exercise it. What happens if it is 195? Well, the same. If the spot price is 195, we can simply buy at 195. Why would we exercise our option at 200 and buy at 200? We wouldn't. So the exercise value is zero. What happens at 190? 190 again gives you uh, the right to buy at 200, where the spot price is 190. So why would you exercise the option at 200 when you can buy it at 190? So I think a couple is enough. So let's look at what happens at uh, 200. Well, at 200, you still have no exercise value. You're indifferent from buying from the market or using your exercise, using your option and exercising it and buying it at uh, using the option. So exercise value. Now notice I am, <clears throat> Uh, ignoring any commissions because if you were to exercise, you would actually pay uh, commissions of you know for exercise, uh, and you also have paid some money to buy this option. And I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. What happens at two o five? Well, at two o five, what happens is you now have a option that's valuable that has a two hundred dollar strike price, which means you can buy at two hundred and the market is 205, so you could sell at 205, which means you will now have a 205 as your sale price and $200 as your uh, purchase price, 
and you could realize an exercise value of five dollars at 210 now notice that you can now buy at 200 that doesn't change right so this is your call option you have a right to buy at 200 but now whatever you buy at 200 you can actually sell them at 210 which means that you have a ten dollar of a uh, exercise value what happens at 220 well again you have a right to buy at 200 if the market price spot price immediate trading price goes up to 220 then you can sell at 220 and buy at 200 using your call options exercise which means you now have a 20 dollars exercise value what happens at 250 well again 250 you're going to sell and 200 you're going to buy so you have a 50 dollars exercise value now notice you're going to pay a commission and every company every brokerage company will charge you a different commission so what I will do is I'm going to have exercise value, right, after commission. So basically, we're just going to look at what happens, right? So let's say that you paid a $1 um, commission. So one. So whatever happens, you actually have that $1. It's a sunk cost. You pay that $1, you're not getting it back. You could sell your option and then get some money back. However, whatever commission that you pay, you're going to pay. And, and in this case, $1 could be quite high. So, um, but let's go with it. So this one minus one, this one minus one, this one minus one, and so on and so forth, right? Now also, when you paid money, in this case, $2.05 to purchase this. So what I will do is I'm gonna have exercise value after commission and then after purchase price. Now notice this is the same option. If you're just adding on top of uh, your exercise value. So you're going to pay this exercise value minus $1 commission minus, in this case, notice we paid $2.05 to buy this, right? And then the same thing, your exercise value minus one minus 205. <clears throat> your 205 does not change. So your 205 does not change. This is again, very much like the commission that you paid. This is a sunk cost, which means you paid this already and you now own the, the, the option. Again, you could sell it back and you can try to get some money out of it, but 205 is paid and it is gone. And then the same thing with this one and so on and so forth. So now notice, that as the stock price goes up, you realize a profit. As the stock price goes down, you don't have a profit. However, your loss is limited to how much you paid for it, how much commissions you paid for it, and so on and so forth. So with a call option, your loss is limited to the amount of money you paid for it. So if you pay a whole lot of money, say $100,000 worth of options, you could lose it all. However, you couldn't lose more than what you paid for it when you're buying a call option. In this case, uh, as the stock price goes up, the underlying asset price goes up, you actually make money. But when the stock price underlying asset value goes down, then your loss will be limited to how much you paid for it plus the commissions and so on and so forth. So that's what happens when you buy a call option.